So we're looking at some additional similarities of triangles. Yesterday, we were looking at angle-angle similarity, which was a pattern that allowed us to look at just two pairs of congruent angles, two pairs of corresponding and congruent angles, and that was enough to show that triangles are congruent. And now we're looking at two additional patterns here. We, we call them the side-side-side similarity and the side-angle-side similarity. And uh, we're just using an illustration for one of the two shapes here. And I already have a couple of triangles drawn out. So again, this is, this is the reminder that remember for any polygons, not just triangles, but for any polygons, you really have to look at each pair of those corresponding angles to show that they're congruent. And each pair of those corresponding sides to show that they are proportional then you know those polygons are similar. So what we're looking at here for these, these patterns, these shortcuts, these only work for triangles. They don't work for any other quadrilateral or any other kind of polygon. These are just very specialized patterns for triangles. So to talk about the side-side-side similarity pattern, we need three sides and no angles. What that means is we're going to be taking a look at two triangles here where we know the corresponding sides are proportional, but we don't know anything about the angles. Now this is a little bit of a gimmick here because in order to make it easier to draw the triangles, we've placed these edges so that they are perpendicular to each other. So this isn't the best example. We, we actually know this is a right angle, so we actually have a side angle side pattern here at the same time as a side, side, side pattern. So you take this with a grain of salt. We just did that to make it easier to draw the triangles. And so I use a straight edge and I have on my smaller triangle, the orange one, I have a side length of six centimeters, 3.5 and 6.9 centimeters. And then for the larger triangle, I have 12, 7, and 13.8. So you can see we're doubling here, 6 to 12, 3.5 to 7, 6.9 to 13.8. So we're doubling here. And that's the intention. Uh, again, we're trying to make it easier on ourselves in terms of drawing the triangles. But ideally, we wouldn't have any information about the angles. And we want to know, are these two triangles similar? Well, we would have to take a look at those corresponding sides, wouldn't we? And so if we were to take a look at those corresponding sides, for example, here you have a height of 7, here you have a height of 3.5. So if you were to take 7 over 3.5, you would get that ratio of 2 to 1. If you were to take a look at the bases, here's the big base of 12 over base of 6. And then if you took the slanted side of 13.8, over 6.9, we get, again, two, uh, 2 over 1. So we do have a common ratio. That is the scale factor, yes. But technically, you have to check those angles to really know if you have congruent, uh, uh, excuse me, the angles pairs are congruent for the triangles to be similar. So again, we're not proving it formally. We're just doing an observation here with the tracing paper. And here is my smaller triangle. And you can see up at the top, those two angles are congruent. So that's a pair of congruent angles. Here on the right side, that's a pair of corresponding angles that are congruent. And then here on the bottom left, that's our third pair of corresponding angles that are congruent. So yes, it does look like it meets the criteria. We check the angles, we check the sides, but in creating the triangles, we were just using the sides. So it turns out that is enough information for us to say the triangles are similar. So if the corresponding sides of the two triangles are proportional, like what we showed here, then that is enough information for us to say the triangles are similar. So as we uh, write this concept here, we'll go side, 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 and there's your symbol for similarity. That's how we'll notate that. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. In example one, we want to know which of these triangles is similar to triangle ABC. So we're doing a, uh, some comparisons. We're comparing triangle DEF to ABC. We want to know, are these similar? Or 
is GHJ similar with ABC? We want to know if those are similar. So what that means is we have to compare our sides because we don't have any angles, right? So let's see if we can set this up. To organize this a little better, because this is going to be a bunch of ratios, I'm going to just note that I'm comparing triangle DEF to triangle ABC first. So if I look at triangle DEF, you have a side of 4, 6, and 8, right? So this is your small side, this is your medium side, this is your large side. And in comparing that to triangle ABC, we have sides of 8, 9, and 12. So here's your small side, medium side, large side. And so this will help us to recognize that we need to compare small to small, medium to medium, and large to large. So small to small, 4 to 8 gives us 1 half. Medium to medium, 6 to 9 reduces to two-thirds. Look at that, you have different ratios. So we don't even have to compare the large sides. We can stop right here because we're observing that these are different ratios. So let me write down our observation. The different ratios means the corresponding sides are not proportional. And if those corresponding sides are not proportional, then that means this is not true, right? We need those corresponding sides to be proportional, but they're not proportional. So these triangles are not similar. All right, let's try comparing triangle GHJ to ABC. All right, so once again, we have side lengths of 16, 18, and 24. So there's your small side, there's your medium side, there's your large side. So let's compare the small side to the small side. So 16 to 8, that's 2 to 1. The medium to the medium, 18 over 9. Okay, so far so good. We can see that this is turning out to be a ratio of 2 to 1. And now the large to the large. 24 to 12, that's also 2 to 1. Yeah, so there's our common ratio. And that's also the scale factor, right? There's our common ratio, and that means the corresponding sides are proportional. So from that, we can conclude that triangle GHJ is similar to triangle ABC by reason of side, side, side. Similarity. So we checked the ratios of those corresponding sides and we didn't have to worry about the angles. All right, this next example is kind of working backwards. Um, we're trying to make the triangle similar. So we have to figure out what value of x would work in actually to uh, set, up, set up those triangles so that those corresponding sides are proportional. Right now we can't check those size if they're proportional or not because of the variable we just we just don't know what that ratio is going to turn out to be so we're going to set up a proportion and cross multiply so here is side a b you can see that's the first two letters of this name that'll pair up with the first two letters of triangle def so a b pairs up with de all right so i'm just writing down what we're looking at here So we have to use those sides like this. Now we could use the bottom sides, but that would bring in another variable. And if I pick the right-hand sides, then I just have numbers and that's easier. So BC and EF, yeah, those are your corresponding parts. So BC and EF. So this is what it looks like. All right, so we have X minus three over 20. And we're setting that equal to 4 over 10. And then we're going to cross multiply. All right, so we have 10 times the quantity x minus 3 equals 20 times the 4. Let's distribute the 10. So 10 times x and 10 times negative 3. And 20 times 4 is 80. So let's add 30 to both sides. We get 100 and 10, and we divide both sides by 10 to isolate the variable, we get 11. Okay, so 
Yes, that's the solution, but think about what this means. This is the only value of x, so that when you plug it back in, you'll get sides that are going to be proportional. So if we plug 11 back in, 11 minus 3 gives us a side of 8. If you plug it in here, 11 times 2 is 22, plus 3 is 25. So what we're saying is that ratio of 4 to 10 will equal the ratio of 8 to 20 will equal the ratio of 10 to 25. Now if we compare those corresponding sides, we would get a common ratio in each case. And again, we're just focusing on the sides and not the angles themselves. So that's the first of our two patterns. Let's see on the back of the next page. We have another comparison. I'm going to skip over this example because it's just like what we saw earlier with example number one where you're comparing the small to the small, the medium to the medium, the large to the large, to figure out which those triangles are similar. So let's just jump down to the next pattern, which is the side angle side similarity. So now we're comparing two sides and one set of angles. If those two corresponding sides of the two triangles are proportional, right? Sides always have to be proportional. So we're talking about the two sides here those two sides have corresponding sides that are proportional. And notice it's not any random angle. It's the included angle, which means it is between the two sides that we're talking about. So the B angle that's between those two sides, if that pair of angles is congruent, then that's enough for us to know that our triangles are going to be similar. So let's take a look at an example here in example four. So tell what method you would use to show that the triangles are similar. Well, first of all, you can see that we don't have three sets of sides. We only have two. So it's probably not the side 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 similarity pattern. So I'm taking a look at each of the triangles. And if you take a look again at one triangle at a time, look at the right triangle. Notice you have a side of length nine and 18. So you can think of that like the smaller of the two sides, and 18 is the larger of the two sides. And then on the left triangle, you have a 12 and 24. So think of 12 as the smaller of the two sides, and the 24 as the larger of the two sides. So let's compare the ratios of those smaller sides. I'm going left triangle to right triangle. So the left triangle has a small side of 12, and the right triangle has a small side of 9. We can divide top and bottom by 3, so we get 4 thirds. Now let's compare the ratio of the larger sides. Here the larger side is 24, and this larger side is 18. And again, we can reduce that down to 4 thirds as well. So we do get a common ratio of those two pairs, but we need an angle, right? This pattern says that we have to identify an angle that is between those two sides we're just talking about. So because we're talking about these sides here, then we have to be looking at this angle and this angle on either side of point R. Now we can't just call that angle R. Remember, you need a three letter combination to name that angle. So this is angle SRT, angle SRT is congruent to angle QRP because they're opposite each other. We call those vertical angles. We know vertical angles are going to be congruent. And so now we have all of the ingredients. We have two pairs of corresponding sides. We have one pair of corresponding angles. Those angles are congruent. Those sides are proportional. So now we can determine that yes, triangle SRT is similar to triangle QRP by reason of side angle side similarity. All right, so that's our one and only example of that particular pattern. And so I want to show you example five. We're changing gears slightly. We're still using uh, the patterns here. It says tell, again, kind of tell what method you would use. We're doing that again here as well. 
And you can see we just have a bunch of sides, right? So that's going to be the side, side, side similarity pattern. But what's a little bit more tricky with this particular diagram is that your two triangles are not separate, but they're sharing a side here. We want to take a look at triangle JKL. That's the triangle on the left. And look at triangle LKM. LKM, that's the triangle here. And again, we want to be able to make sure that we are picking the right sides to set up our ratios. And that's really what I want to talk to you about here in this triangle. Because you also have this really big triangle, but we're not looking at the big triangle, we're looking at the leftmost triangle and the rightmost triangle. So one option is you can look at the order of letters. For example, if you look at this 49, that side, JK. JK is the first and second letter of this triangle's name. So that would pair up with the first and second letter of this triangle's name, and that's LK. And LK is over here on the height. So what that means is that these two triangles are not oriented the same way. Here the base is on the bottom, and on this right triangle the base is actually here. Those are your corresponding parts. So again, it's a lot easier, I think, I mean, you can look at those letters, but I think it's a lot easier to identify your small, medium, and large sides. So on the left triangle, 28 is your smallest side, 49 is your medium, and 56 is your largest side. So then if you look at the rightmost triangle, now you're looking at 16, 28, and 32. So 16 is your smallest side, 28 is the medium, and 32 is the largest, okay? So we're going to set up a ratio of our small sides, medium sides, and large sides. So I have a small side of 28 and 16. My medium sides are 49 and 28. And then my large sides are 56 and 32. All right, so what's tricky here is because that 28 is showing up as a small side on the left triangle, but at the same time, the 28 is the medium side on the right triangle. Because the two triangles are not separate from each other, they're sort of joined together with this common side from LK. So that's why this 28 is showing up in both the small ratio as well as the medium ratio. We're going to reduce each of these. We're looking to see if we get a common ratio. So we can uh, divide this by 4, and we will get 7 fourths. We can divide this by 7, and we get 7 fourths. We can divide this by 8, and we get 7 fourths. So we do get that common ratio. That means our corresponding sides are proportional. So. Triangle JKL is similar to triangle LKM by reason of our side-side-side similarity.